Hello, everyone. This is Craig Merriweather, and welcome to Depression 180. On this show, we discuss depression, something that affects a lot of people in this world of ours. It's quite possible that depression will touch your life at some point, whether you struggle with it yourself, or maybe a friend, or a family member, your husband or wife, or maybe a child. So in this show, we talk about depression. We're going to cover a lot of the facts and myths about depression, what depression really is, what are the real reasons behind depression, why it may show up in your life. We're going to talk about antidepressants, what they actually do to the brain, and we'll go over some scientifically proven methods for eliminating depression. Now, research has shown that there are four very different underlying causes of depression. And in this second episode, in this three-episode series, uh, we're going to talk about the second reason. Now, I don't want to make these shows overly long. I want to give you the information you need and ways where you can find out more information if you want it. So here's my promise that I'll give you as much information as I can in the time that we have together. And at the end of the show, if you're interested, I'll tell you how you can take it further and deeper. So in part one of this series, we talked about the different ways depression can be caused due to some disruption in your physiology or biology, let's say an illness or a nutritional deficiency like maybe a food allergy, maybe you have low vitamin D, low testosterone. In this episode, we're going to talk about how medications, drugs, and toxins can affect the body and the brain and cause depression. Now, there are over 100 prescription medication and over-the-counter drugs whose side effects include depression and anxiety. And we are also inundated day in and day out with environmental toxins such as chemicals and heavy metals that disrupt our immune system. You know, you add in alcohol, you add in caffeine, recreational drugs, uh, tobacco use, and our system may start having a major meltdown with depression being one of the warning signals. Disturbingly, one group of prescription medications that have been linked to depression are antidepressants. Now, you probably won't be told this when you pick up your antidepressants at the pharmacy, but some of the side effects in some of the most popular selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRI, such as Prozac and Zoloft, are depression, violence, and suicide, and that's we're gonna. That's a whole other episode in and of itself. So look out for that one. Now, some prescription medications for these next illnesses may cause depression as a side effect. Medications for ADD, like Ritalin, uh, alcoholism medication, anti-anxiety medication, antibiotics, and like I just said, antidepressants actually may cause depression in some people. Uh, anti-inflammatory agents, uh, arthritis medication. Birth control pills, a huge one right there. A lot of women feeling depressed after, they're, after they start a series of birth control pills. Blood pressure medication, cancer medications, heartburn medication, heart disease medications, uh, painkillers, ulcer medications. And these are regular kind of medications that the general population might be taking. If you're concerned about the medication you're taking, talk to your doctor, talk to your pharmacist. There's also another way you can get some information. It's called a physician's desk reference. Now, this used to be, well, it probably still is, uh, a big book that is found at most doctor's offices. It lists all the different kind of medications and how the doses information and what's in the drug and what drugs not to mix with it and what, what, how much to give to children, what the side effects are. And this is information given by the pharmaceutical manufacturers. And, but now it's all on a website. And if you go to www.pdr.net, Physician's Desk Reference, pdr.net, and on the left-hand side there, you can enter in your medication, and up will come all the information you need to find out what the side effects are, oh, doses information, uh, things to look out for. Now, if you're on multiple medications, you're really going to need to check with your doctor and pharmacist if you're feeling like something's not going right. Uh, possibly the drugs could be interacting with each other and causing a negative reaction such as depression or any other side effect. So that's prescription drugs. There's also recreational drugs, and by that I'm talking alcohol, caffeine, cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, methamphetamines, tobacco. You know, these drugs in some people can cause depression. Now, I know caffeine is a big part of a lot of people's lives. You need that cup of coffee. Uh, and if you need that cup of coffee, like I just said, that you might be having some uh, sleep issues, energy issues, something that you probably need to see a doctor for. If you enjoy a cup of coffee, enjoy a cup of coffee. But if you need that cup of coffee to get up in the morning or get that burst of energy in the afternoon, uh, you're having some nutritional issues. You're having some sleep issues. Try cutting down the coffee just to see what happens. See if that's a factor in your depression. 
And, but, of course, you got to be careful because caffeine withdrawal can also cause depression in some people. And I'm going through these pretty fast. So if something rings true to you, uh, start doing your own research. Start doing your own education and your due diligence. So we've had uh, prescription medications, recreational uh, drugs. There are chemicals that can actually cause depression. I'm talking about dry cleaners uh, chemicals. Formaldehyde, which you can find in particle board and new carpet, household cleaners, paints, pesticides. If you test anyone anywhere on earth, you will find they have about 250 chemical contaminants in their body fat, which has been taken in through either eating the substance on, on their food, drinking it, breathing it in, or by absorbing it through the skin. So these chemicals will disrupt brain activity, which can lead to depression, could lead to anger, uh, other mood disorders. Here's a quote from Dr. Sherry Rogers. She says, Everyday chemicals have the potential to interfere with the metabolism of brain neurotransmitters or happy hormones in a lot of pathways. They interfere with the synthesis and the metabolism. They block receptor sites, poison enzymes, and much more. So let me give you an example. There's a, a group of chemicals known as hydrazines. Now these are colorless liquids that are used in rocket fuels, pesticides, chemical manufacturing, uh, growth retardants, a lot of different things like that. Now, hydrazine is sprayed on potatoes. They do this to pro prolong the shelf life in the grocery store. Now, when absorbed into the body, hydrazine blocks vitamin B6 activity, which is needed for the manufacture of serotonin, that happy chemical, brain chemical. Uh, it, th now, there's enough hydrazine in one serving of fast food french fries or one bag of potato chips to obliterate all the B6 in your body. Now there are many jobs that require you to work with chemicals that could cause depression or other ailments. Now these jobs uh, are like agriculture and food production jobs, asphalt paving, circuit boards and semiconductor manufacturing, dry cleaning, exterminators, uh, janitor and home cleaning, with all those chemicals you got, cleaning chemicals you got to work with. If you're working at a gas station, um, if you're a painter, paint remover, a printer, nail salon technician, textile manufacturing, if you're a worker who uses metal or vapor degreasers, refrigerants, foam blowing agents, coolants, anything like that, these can all be absorbed into your system and wreak havoc. Uh, other things to look out for, heavy metals, aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury, these are all metals that can cause depression. Now, if you're working in some sort of manufacturing, you can look out for that. Most of us all need to worry about mercury. Now, the heavy metal mercury was used in hat making back in the 18th century and caused many of these hat makers to suffer from neurological disorders, hence the phrase mad as a hatter. Now, mercury is absorbed into the bloodstream and transported to the spinal cord and the brainstem where it settles in the nerve cells. And the cells become toxic and they, and they die and they live, in a, or they live in a state of chronic malnutrition and a multitude of illnesses usually associated with some sort of neurological disorder can result, including depression. Now, you can find mercury in a lot of places in the environment, but we mainly ingest mercury in two ways. The first is through the fish that we eat. Most fish have at least a small trace of mercury in them. Now, the risk for mercury poisoning from fish and selfish depend on the amount of fish and selfish you eat and where they come from in the world, the levels of mercury in them. Now, the second way we're getting mercury into our system, a lot of you may already know this, but it's through the fillings in our teeth. There are different kinds of fillings nowadays, but a lot of us of a certain age, most of our fillings are mercury. And these fillings leach mercury predominantly through the form of vapor, 80% of which is absorbed through the lungs into the bloodstream. Now, chewing actually raises the level of this vapor emission from these mercury fillings that we have, and it remains elevated for about 90 minutes afterwards. So if you're concerned about that, you really need to go talk to your dentist, see about um, getting those fillings out. I know there's some dentists who actually specialize in removing mercury fillings. So if you live in a big town, that's probably uh, there's probably a few who actually specialize in doing that. So look around for that. And again, the Internet's a great place to start doing research about that. Of course, there are a lot of different reasons why depression could show up in your life. The fact that you may have metal poisoning is probably not high in that list, but if you've tried everything, you're getting no results, your depression is still with you, and your depression is accompanied by the following symptoms like headaches or tremors, numbness, tingling, persistent fatigue, 
then you might want to look into the possibility of heavy metal poisoning, especially if you work in a career where you're exposed to metal, such as like a dental office or a lab or a factory. Uh, you might want to try looking for a doctor certified in clinical metal toxicology. So you can go to the website of the American Board of Clinical Metal Toxicology at www.abcmt.org. That's abcmt.org to find a doctor who could help you test, test yourself to see if you may be dealing with some metal poisoning in your, in your bloodstream. So this was just a really quick episode on the second of the four real causes of depression. Um, I'm not going to go into a big, long story about my struggles with depression. I uh, already told my story in some detail on the depression and genetics episode. I do want to let you know if this is the first time you're, you're hearing me, I did suffer for many years from depression, struggled with it for a really long time. And the information from this episode and this, this whole podcast series that I'm doing comes from the research and the study I did to find my way out and eliminate depression. And after a, a few years of research, after some trial and errors on my part in finding out what works and what doesn't work, I ended up with this huge toolbox full of scientifically proven methods for getting out of depression. And so I'm, I'm trying to go around and raise awareness, become a wake-up call to let people know they don't have to feel like this anymore. You don't have to feel depressed. You don't have to feel tired. You don't have to feel angry. You don't have to feel resentful. You can live a life of happiness. It will take some effort on your part. It took some effort to get to where you are. And if you want to get out of where you are, you're going to have to start taking some action steps. So after eliminating my own depression in my life, after taking the action steps to deal with with the life uh, I was living, because I couldn't live like that anymore, I ended up with this huge toolbox, which I turned into the Depression 180 program. And it's a great resource because it takes out all the stumbling steps that I had to go through to find find my way out. Wendy Love, who is the creator and author of the award-winning blog, DepressionGateway.com, she says this about the Depression 180 program. This is one of the best, most thorough books on depression I have read, and I have read most of them. It is the most thorough account of all the strategies you could possibly employ to manage depression. If you want to get more information about the Depression 180 program, go to Depression180.com. While you're at Depression180.com, you can sign up for and download a couple of free audios one is the four real causes of depression, and it's what we've been talking about in these last couple of episodes, but in a lot more detail. And the second one is all about what antidepressants are doing to your brain, and it goes into a lot of detail about antidepressants. So you can download those for free. Also, while you're at Depression180.com, you can find my YouTube channel, which has a lot more detailed free information there about depression and ways to eliminate it. So I want to thank you for listening and also having the courage to start looking into ways of eliminating depression. It's not easy because depression really sucks that life energy out of you. You just want to lay in bed and you don't want to talk to anybody. I totally understand that. So congratulations on taking these first steps. This is huge. So I just want to tell you, you deserve to feel great. You deserve to feel happy. You deserve to have a great life. And if you're struggling with depression, it's not your fault. But it is your responsibility to get better and take some action steps towards eliminating depression. You need to start doing something. The results you have today are due to what you did yesterday or did not do yesterday. So if you start working on it today, tomorrow is going to be a lot brighter. So go to depression180.com, check out what's going on there, check out the Depression 180 program and all the free stuff you can download. And that's it for this episode, and I'll talk to you next time. <music>